Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the Pole's unique unit, the Obuch, which I'm told by my Polish viewers is the right pronunciation. Now, cavalry is probably the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Poles, with their cheaper knights and the winged hussar. It turns out though they also have a pretty solid infantry unique unit, with the unusual ability to remove enemy armor. Now when deep diving into new units, I often like using more familiar ones as a comparison, and in this case, two come to mind. The first is the Militia Line as a generic infantry stand-in, and the other is going to be the Sicilian Sergeant. Of course, the Sergeant can build dungeons, so it's not quite the same thing, but combat-wise they have a lot of surface similarities, and the connection doesn't stop there. At the moment, there's a bug that when a Sicilian Monk converts a Polish Obu, it can actually build dungeons. Now while I don't expect that to ever impact gameplay, it does suggest that the Obu was originally made by just copying and pasting the Sergeant's game files, so it seems fitting to include them. Starting things off in Castle Age, at first glance the Obu seems quite cheap, and it costs only 10 food more than a Long Swordsman after supplies. In terms of their attack in Castle Age, it's all pretty similar, and they even all attack at the same rate, making it pretty easy to compare. Keep in mind this doesn't reflect the Obu removing armor over time, and we'll look into examples of how that factors in a bit later. In terms of armor and HP, they're significantly more tanky than the Long Swordsman, but actually have lower armor than the Sergeant. Determining which one ends up being more durable actually depends on the attack of whatever they're up against. Against units that do between 6 and 9 damage, like a Castle Age Crossbowman, the Sergeant's higher armor means they can survive longer. Whereas if you're up against a unit that does less than 6 or more than 10 damage, like the Knight, then the Obu is tankier thanks to its extra HP. Their HP is actually exceptionally high, and in Castle Age is right up there with the Teutonic Knight for the most of any infantry. Switching to the Imperial Age, Obu have a fairly cheap upgrade cost in this comparison, with the Champion line being the most expensive if we include all of their upgrades and also throw in the cost of supplies. As with any unique unit, it's always worth pointing out the higher cost of castles versus barracks, though that's actually not as big of an issue in this case as it would be for other civilizations. Only the Karambit and Shotel Warriors have a faster base creation time than the Obu, and remember that Poles also generate gold while mining stone, making it much easier to prioritize stone and get an early castle, or even two. Looking at their somewhat lower attack again, keep in mind if you're removing armor from the target as you attack it, that ends up being another way of saying that you deal an increasing amount of damage with each hit. While they may appear to lag behind in damage dealt when looking at the stats, after 3 attacks on a target they're suddenly hitting as hard as a champion, so it is better than it looks. The lower base attack is also offset by having better armor than the champion, and also the most HP out of the group. Diving deeper now into some of their hidden bonuses, notice that all 3 deal extra damage against eagles, though the champion are definitely a cut above. Like most infantry, they also do some extra bonus against buildings, which increases as they're upgraded. Notice the Obu has the highest bonus damage against buildings, which is yet another way they make up for their lower base attack. In fact, when fully upgraded, elite Obu only end up doing one less damage than a champion against buildings with masonry. Considering their early castles, fast creation speed, a relatively cheap cost per unit, an above average bonus against buildings, and relatively high HP and armor, I'd say at least at this point the Obu is one of the easiest infantry units to mass in the mid game, and on paper appears to be quite well rounded before even considering its unique effect. But now let's get to their quirky armor stripping mechanic, which keep in mind is just something extra on top of what we've already seen is an otherwise solid unit. The way it works is that with each attack they first deal their damage as usual, and then immediately afterward one melee and pierce armor are removed from the target. This even works on armor upgrades they've picked up from the blacksmith, and both melee and pierce armor drop by one every attack until they reach zero. In the weird case of rams which have negative 3 melee armor, you might expect something odd to happen, but pretty simply it's just unaffected and stays at negative 3. As a quick side note, one thing I love about playing civilizations with infantry unique units is that they give your castles an excellent response to rams. It's an option that archer civilizations don't have, and can easily save you a castle here and there, with the obu being especially good at this given their quick creation time. Getting back to their unique mechanic, you may initially think the Obu's armor removal implies they specialize against units like the Teutonic Knight or Boyar, which of course are known for having high armor. In practice though, the Obu's first few attacks do so little damage against them that that ends up being a pretty poor matchup. Also keep in mind that any armor removed by an Obu is a permanent change unless the de-armored unit is healed back to full health. That's relevant for the handful of units that are able to heal themselves, though someone could also garrison units into a defensive building or simply use a monk to heal them. 
Notice that being partially healed has no effect, but at the instant they reach their maximum HP, the armor returns to normal. I should also point out that while Obu are very strong against buildings, that's largely due to their unusually high bonus damage against them, and their armor shredding mechanic has no effect on building armor whatsoever. So that's their mechanic and everything we can get by looking at them on paper, and now let's test them out in a variety of matchups to get a better sense of how they perform. The most basic test is of course how they do against champions. To put it under a microscope, the champion's first attack does 12 damage, while the first Obu attack does 10. Of course, as they strip away armor, that increases by 1 with every subsequent attack, and by the third hit, they're dealing more damage than the champion, while also having 25 more HP. As we'd probably expect, the Obu wins that fight head-to-head. -head. On a larger scale, with equal numbers against champions, a group of Obu end with 27% of their HP left, so it would be a noticeable advantage. Keep in mind these are just generic fully upgraded champions though, and if we switch them out for faster attacking Japanese ones, the fight appears it could go either way. Even if we account for the slightly higher food cost of the Obu against generic champions, it seems you are being well compensated for that higher cost. Maybe even more impressively, they also do well with equal numbers against sergeants, despite costing around half the gold. In this case, their combination of high armor and low attack works against them by extending the battle. Unfortunately for the sergeant, that just gives the Obu more time to fully utilize its special ability. That got me thinking though, one category of unit with very low attack are the trash units. Traditionally, champions are considered a general counter to all of them, but if their stats also play to the Obu's strength, then we'd expect the Obu to fill that role even better. In this test, outnumbered 24 to 16 by Hazard, champions are pretty quickly overwhelmed, while Obu actually make it an even fight. To get this kind of value in melee against fully upgraded Hazards for only 20 gold is impressive to say the least, and even outnumbered like this, it would be cost effective for the Obu if they were selling 100 food for 31 or more gold at the market. It turns out though, they do even better against Halberdiers. In this test, even outnumbered 2 to 1, they end with over half of their HP left, compared to the champion having less than a third. Of course, both are good counters in practice, but the Obu is again showing a pretty clear edge. In addition to the Obu having more HP and armor, I think a big part of this comes back to the Halberdier's low attack, meaning individual fights are lasting long enough for armor stripping to ramp up to its full potential. Finally though, the largest advantage over the champion turns out to be against elite skirmishers, where they take 95 instead of 35 javelins. I think it's safe to say that to whatever degree you think champions are an anti-trash unit, the Obu for a similar cost takes that to the next level in all cases. In fact, unless you're against eagle warriors or all of your castles are destroyed, it's hard to see a compelling argument for going with champion over Obu as poles. Thinking more about how the civilization fits together, another important consideration when playing poles is their lack of halberdier. It may seem like a stretch, but just for fun, let's see how the Obu perform as a replacement in the anti-cavalry role. Against Castle Age Knights, as expected, pikemen are the better choice, with their plus 22 bonus damage. I wouldn't say there was a real surprise there, but notice the Obu holds up reasonably well against the knight. In fact, with just a slight numbers advantage and far less resources spent, the Obu can actually handle the knights at least cost effectively. And remember, unlike pikemen, this isn't meant to be their specialty. Switching now to the Imperial Age though, and remembering that poles lack halberdier, elite Obu actually do better against paladins one-on-one -on -one than pikemen. Obviously, the gold cost is an important factor, so pikes do still have a role, but it's notable that the Obu is performing better against cavalry than the pole's anti-cavalry specialist. At this point, you may be wondering what actually stops this unit. Archers are of course a logical choice as they typically counter infantry, but even that doesn't fully translate to the Obu. Given their higher HP and pierce armor, they take almost double the arrows that a generic champion does. To give a bit of context and bring the comparison back, that still is just around half of the elite sergeant though. To me, archers feel like a soft counter against the Obu with a significant mass, and considering the high HP and armor involved, it's far from a hard counter. That said, they aren't invincible to everything. Against hand cannoneers, they take just 5 shots instead of the 4 that champions do, so I'd still consider that a pretty good counter. Likewise, anything anti-infantry like Jaguar Warriors and Cataphracts or anti-unique unit like the Samurai are also going to be effective. As we saw before, Obu can also be beaten with raw power, and of course you could also just target their castles to stop them more indirectly. Now one final point I want to touch on is whether there's any effective combos that poles can use featuring the Obu. Theoretically, there's quite a bit of synergy between a tanky melee unit that weakens enemy armor and archers, who are essentially being buffed with every Obu attack. 
For example, using 20 champions and arbalests against 15 paladins usually is not a winning combination. They easily overwhelm champions one on one and can also soak up the arrows fairly well. That said, if we switch out the champions with similarly priced Obu, not only are we getting a better unit in melee, but the Arbalesters are also performing better as well, which you can see completely changes the outcome for almost no additional cost. Now keep in mind, this is a combo with two different gold units, which isn't going to be possible long term without trade, but even the Skirmisher has some potential in the same role. Elite Skirmishers deal 7 damage, which is normally reduced to 1 by Paladin Armor, but after being softened up a bit by Obu, the Skirmishers end up hitting the Paladins just as hard, if not even harder, than Arbalesters from other civilizations. In fact, with the same number of units, that combination ends up giving better results than the generic champion and arbalest combo. And that's even before thinking about the massive difference in gold cost by substituting arbalesters with skirmishers. So that's my overview of the Obu. I think it's a unit that's easy to overlook, but based on what I've seen, they look like a solid option in almost any situation where you'd consider using champions. I wouldn't be shocked if one of their creation time, cost, pierce armor, or bonus against buildings ends up being nerfed in the not too distant future. That said, aside from a bit of early experimentation, most of what I've seen is players using poles as a strictly cavalry or tower rushing civilization, and as long as their unique unit stays somewhat niche, it could continue to fly under the radar. That's all for this one though, shout out to Jean Paul, Ben, Justin, Brian, Kyle, James, Samantha, I Like Toes at Night, and everyone else on Patreon for their awesome support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.